Hey Math 43, I want to take a moment and show you how to create a new safety zone to figure out if you have outliers when you're looking at bivariate data. We did it for univariate data back in chapter two. That's when we built the safety zone with your IQR multiplied by one and a half, subtract it from Q1, add it to Q3. Here we're just going to figure out um, what the average residual value is and double it, and that's going to create our safety zone. So if we look at the end of the chapter 12 packet, um, we talked about influentials and outliers. And if you scroll down, here's all of the calculator work showing you how to determine if outliers are present for the data set in examples one and two. And then I would suggest you try it on your own with examples 11 and 13. But I'm going to go ahead and do it for example 10. So let me scroll back up to example 10. That's when we were dealing with the cardiac arrest data. So how long had a patient flatlined and how was that predictive of their survival rate? So if you want to figure out if there's outliers present, standard thing, right? Start up, make sure you've got your stuff in L1 and L2, and we need to run linear regression. So let me go ahead and let's hit stat calc, oops, eight. And then we're going to go L1. Oh, apparently I hit something. I'm not sure why it's popping up. Let me start this over. It might be popping up because I, I did this video once and I already messed up on it. So I'll do L1, L2, and wait for it, Y1. All right, so there we go. We have our, our regression model. I dropped it into Y1, um, my plot's on, so if I hit zoom nine, there's our linear regression model. All right, so once you get your LSRL, go ahead and calculate your residuals. So let me head over to L3 and define this to be my residual plot. Now, if I remember from the last video, that's option eight on my calculator. It might be seven or eight or nine. You just have to find the list in there that says resid, hit enter, and there are my residuals. Okay, so those are the individual residuals. Now we need to get our upper and lower bound of our safety zone so that we can determine whether or not we have outliers. So here's how this works. Go to your home screen. All right, let's hit stat, go to tests, now, by the end of this class, you will have gone through almost all of these menu items. But for this chapter and this chapter only, we have to, it's the calculator function we need is so far down at the bottom, it's actually easier to scroll up. So everybody has this. It's called linear regression t-test. Now, the 83s might have it in a different spot. It might be option D over in the T-83s, but mine is option F. All right. So leave everything as is. As long as your data is in L1 and L2 and your frequency is one, which it will be, just go down and hit calculate. All right, so let's go down and hit calculate and we're looking for S, the average residual length. So let me scroll down, there's my S. I can see it at 11.575. So I'm just gonna kind of go over here and keep note of that, 575. Now what you wanna do to figure out if you have outliers is multiply this number by two. So let me take 11.575 and multiply it by two. And I'm looking at about 23.5, okay? Now I'm just writing this over here in my, my Word document. So I want you to keep in mind 23.5. That means my safety zone, if I wanna think of it this way, is from negative 23.15 to positive 23.15. So any residuals, that are smaller than negative 23.15 or larger than positive 23.15 will be considered outliers. So let me go back into my lists and see if we have any outliers. So here's my first residual at 7.3. 7.3 is inside my safety zone. So that, that ordered pair, that data point, not an outlier. Um, negative 0.6 inside my safety zone, negative 6.3 inside my safety zone, negative 12.6 and 12.2. They're all within that safety zone. So I can conclude that for this particular data set, oops, we had no outliers. Oops, and I can't spell outliers, no outliers present. And, and that kind of, not kind of, it goes along with what you're seeing here. There's no observation that has a really large residual. Like this was looking to be the largest one or maybe this one, and it's not that large, relatively speaking, right? It didn't have a very large residual. It wasn't isolated in the Y direction. So that's, that's the algebra matching up with our, our graph. And that's how you figure out outliers. 
run linear regression t-test, look for that s value, the average residual length, double it, the negative doubling number, whatever that is, in this case it was 23.5, is the lower bound of your safety zone, 23.15 upper bound. As long as residuals are within that safety zone, they are not considered outliers. All right, so that's it, folks. I will see you in a few. Bye.